Hi guys, I hope that you are all safe and that you are all well. I'm just coming on because I've had a request, could I do a video on how to do scrying? So I thought that was a really interesting kind of um, question. So I thought I'd try and do a video to the best of my ability. Now, scrying you can do in many weird and wonderful ways, but I thought I'd show you the way that's gonna work best or how I tend to work. Now, I've actually got like a collection of scrying mirrors. So behind me on the shelf, you probably can't see this too well, but this is my like little witch's um, kind of little um, sort of kind of area, if you like. So I've got my altar on the bottom, then the middle shelf, I've got my scrying mirrors and my crystal ball and my athame and some of my witchy kind of tools. Then the top shelf is packed full of herbs and um, different stuff, my kitchen witch energy. So it's where I do all my conduct, my spells, my magic and all the rest of it. Um, you can't see probably very well, but to the side of me, I'll just see if I can sort of show you with the candle. I have my, um, this spirit guide, maybe see her just about. She is my witch spirit guide. So she's called Solare and she helps me with all of my magic. She's a high priestess from a past time period. Um, so she sort of goes there. So ooh, let me just put this, um, Back, making sure not to sort of break anything in the process so so this is my little sort of witchy cabin my little witchy kind of underground cellar where all the magic happens but when I do scrying what I would normally do is I'd have everything pitch black which I will do when we do the actual scrying itself so I have uh, a few different mirrors I use now when I'm doing sort of scrying from for real like sort of you know powerful intent I use this beautiful scrying mirror Okay, so this is what I would normally use, what I would normally work with. And because this is so diversified, you know, this is something that you could use. So I could scry literally with it like this. I could hold it and scry. Or I could actually um, take this out under the moonlight. I've done this loads of times under the moon, under the stars, and I've scryed with it that way so you can sort of see. Um, so that's one way that you can actually use this mirror, but because it's portable, there's so many options. Now I was actually going to not use this for the video, but I've just seen that that works so well like that. So I might actually use this to do the video. Okay. What I originally had planned, I'll quickly just show you behind me are my other scrying mirrors. So I don't know if you can just about sort of see those there. What I'll do is I'll light the candle behind me. Let me just put this back down. I'll light the candle behind me so you can see, because this is what I was going to use a sec. Hang on. That's better. So I was going to use that behind me there. Can you see that just about? Or the candles, that looks like it's actually going out. So that's not good. Or is it still on, just very low? But I think I'll actually use the other one because that works really well. So ultimately you need uh, a dark setting. It's, you know, pitch black is ideal. That's the great thing with the cellar, you know, because I can make it literally pitch black down here. And what you do when you scry, you get a collection of information. So sometimes spirit can show themselves within the mirror itself. So sometimes you might see a physical person and that might be somebody that you recognise, it might be a guide. It's always good to have maybe like a journal to hand so you can journal things down. Also with scrying, you can do it in a way where you sometimes might see, um, like you might get sort of um, smoke or energy around either the edge of the mirror or inside the mirror itself. And that is a little bit like the starting point of a spirit physically trying to show themselves because spirits come forward through reflective surface this is why with a scrying mirror it's always black so that they can actually show themselves very kind of clearly very matter of fact um, sometimes you might just get little speckles or little orbs around the edge sometimes you might get almost like rune symbols I've had that before where like a rune symbol is actually kind of being kind of gifted um, so many weird and wonderful things that can happen and that's the great thing with sort of scrying or with any form of divination um, You know, it's going to be so personal to you So I can't tell you the experience of what will happen Scrying is a discipline. It's a sort of form of divination where you have to kind of keep working with it So things might not happen straight away. They might not happen instantly But if they don't happen first time try again keep keep going with it 
Now you can use any form of candle to scry with, but you will need a candle in order to sort of get that energy because the candle will obviously create the scene. So it's about turning off the lights, having it as dark and as black as you can get it, having a candle nearby. It doesn't have to be directly on it. You can move the mirror around, particularly if it's portable like this one. You can actually sort of try different um, different angles, different things. You can look down, look into it. You know, there's so many options. Um, but what I'm going to do is I always scry with music because music is also great to relax the mental mind. It's really good to just sort of de-stress. So I'm only going to do like a very short, maybe like five minute session of scrying just for this video. Um, and if you see something whilst we're doing the scrying, then fabulous, you take the experience because within these videos when I've done them before, sometimes different people see different things. So spirit might show you something that resonates just for you, okay? Um, I know that there are spirits around me at the moment because I'm feeling the change of energy in the room and I'm just thinking I hope nothing scary happens because this is sometimes the thing because it can be quite you know ooh, in here it's like the energy is really changing but um, you know that's the only thing I don't like with scrying when it's pitch pitch black like this and because I am underground in my cellar um, you know what I do is I've got some music on YouTube and I have to say by law I don't own the rights to this music but I love to scry to um, a piece by Heather Dell and she's a great kind of um, folklore singer and she sings a lot about kind of Arthur and King Arthur and, and Merlin sort of time period. And the song I love to scry to is actually called Three Queens and it's not in a camp way, but it's it's the Three Queens song and it's the stages of she talks about like, you know, maiden, mother and crone energy and it's just a very powerful it's a just very powerful song. I just love it and I find it's a good one to scry to. Um, but you'll have whatever works for you. Some people prefer instrumental music. I quite like sometimes scrying to Enya and Boudicca because you can have that on the hour long cycle. Scrying is good to do in stages. So do it for five, ten minutes. Take a rest, take a breather um, and then go back into it and then sort of write down your findings. That So it's, it is a discipline that takes time. It's very rare you just sort of set straight up and then you see something. I'm not saying that that won't happen, but it can take time for an adjustment period. And um, particularly when you first learn to scry, it might be that all you see is the fog or the haze around the edge and that might be all you get. But as time goes on, more things will come. So it's a discipline to stick with, keep at it. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn the light off so I'm gonna plunge us even into more darkness. Okay, so bear with me a sec. Okay, so now it's kind of as dark as I can get it physically in in here. Obviously it's still quite light in the video because you can sort of see everything. I'm gonna sort of let the song play and I'm just gonna sort of scry whilst the song plays. So like I say, see what you get. And you can candle scry, you don't have to use a mirror. Um, you know, you can, you can scry with just a naked flame. There's so many weird and wonderful ways. But I'm just gonna put this into a position that is comfortable for me to hold. And so you can see, that's like perfect. So you can see the candle in the flame. Sorry, see the candle in the flame? You can see the flame inside the mirror, I should say. And so hopefully, you know, we might get some energy. If you see anything, you can obviously drop it in the comments if anything happens. I can't bring it in kind of too close because you need to be able to sort of get the magic of it. So I'm gonna hit play on the song and I'm just gonna go really quiet, really still. And again, you know, just drop down your findings if you see anything and if not. But this is an example of how scrying works. So enjoy, guys.
Okay guys, so that's a little bit of scrying. And like I say, it does take time. So you might have seen something in that and you may not have done. And if you did, fabulous. I could see around my face was changing at one point and I felt like it was almost becoming older and I could actually feel the features. So this is the thing, sometimes when you scry, you can also, depending how you do it and how you have the candle set up, you can see your own image in the in the um, in the mirror, and then sometimes it can actually change and it can morph into a spirit loved one, a spirit guide, somebody else that you know. Um, I didn't want to do it for too long because I'll be honest, there's a lot of activity in here tonight, and it is a bit creepy on your own. Normally, when I scry, I actually do it as in sessions with people, so we all have our own little scrying mirror. And we do it in sort of dark and it's nice because the energy can build up more. But it's a great sort of um, one to sort of try, you know. So that's basically how to scry in a nutshell. Like I say, just a very quick video because I had a request and I thought, okay, why not come on and, uh, and try and sort of show it to you guys. So I hope that that resonates and it sort of helps. Um, and if you're interested in having a go, try it. Like I say, maybe keep like a scrying journal so you can jot down things. It is one of those disciplines, it's a bit like medium, uh, not mediumship, a bit like meditation. Sometimes you get amazing downloads, other times you do it and not much happens. It can vary, but it is, it's definitely a great thing to have a go at doing and just seeing, you know, be open to what can happen, what can evolve. So I'm going to leave the energies with you. Stay safe and well, and I'll catch up with you again soon. Much love. Bye for now, guys.